Hello and welcome to this video. In this particular video, we are going to be taking a look at the real truth about technical indicators. We'll understand whether technical indicators really work or not. And we'll also see how professionals make use of technical indicators to make profitable trades. You need to use technical indicators the way they are meant to be used, not the way they are advertised to be used by a lot of people who develop these indicators and who really don't understand how these indicators work. So in this video, we are going to be taking uh, technical uh, indicators to the next level. We're going to understand how you can actually use these indicators to make profitable trades. A quick preview as to what all we'll cover. So we'll understand what information comes from the stock market. We'll understand why price action is the most important thing to make profitable trades. We'll also understand, as I mentioned earlier, we'll demystify all the myths regarding technical indicators and we'll understand, we'll basically come to a conclusion whether technical indicators are the holy grail of trading and we'll also understand how professionals use technical indicators and finally this is a very important thing i get a lot of questions around this because there are tons of people out there who are trying to sell different technical indicators so should you really invest in a technical indicator or not we'll look at that as well before we proceed, a quick look at the disclaimer that whatever information I'm sharing with you is only for entertainment purposes. This is not any kind of trading or investment advice. So let's get started. The first thing is what data comes from the stock market. Everything about technical indicators is based on price and volume because these are the only two data sets that you get from any stock market. Look at any stock exchange. The only data that gets published from the stock exchange is stock price and the volume. There's no third set of data. So what are technical indicators? No stock exchange is actually giving the value of any technical indicator. Technical indicators are simply formulas that are applied to the price most of the time, sometimes for the volume. Some indicators are based on volume, but we'll focus on the price action here. So technical indicators based on price are essentially formulas applied to the price action coming out of the stock market. You can pick up any technical indicator uh, from the very simple ones like moving averages, to Bollinger Bands, to RSI, to MACD, or the complex ones where people kind of claim to have proprietary rights. Essentially, they are just talking about the historical prices, applying some formula and converting it to some number or some pattern, which then they claim can be used for trading. A lot of people create these technical indicators and in order to make them look fancy, all they'll do is they'll put the words buy and sell next to certain conditions being met. So when you chart those indicators, you'll actually see the indicator chart saying buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. That's nothing fancy. It's basically a rule. I could give you a trading strategy saying whenever the RSI is below 30 and it starts going above 30, that's a buy signal. So I can create a modified RSI indicator where I can simply ask the, the programmer to put that word buy uh, to get printed whenever the RSI has this behavior of being below 30 and then trying to move above above 30 So that doesn't make the indicator any different uh, So don't fall for these traps. Okay, essentially understand one thing Which is the most important thing that price and volume are the only two data sets that come out of any stock exchange And these are the only two authentic data sets that we need to work with so that should be our focus to understand what is the price action instead of that if we try focusing on very complex formulas that different people can create and most of the formulas that people create they call them technical indicators are in fact just technical jargon to make you feel that you're working with something very very advanced and very very technical and then that that's the holy grail and and once you use that indicator you're going to end up with profitable trades but that's not the case you have to understand that anybody who is developing a technical indicator is essentially taking the price and volume data and then applying some sort of formula on it to come up with some other number and then giving an interpretation to that number. So with this myth aside, let's move ahead. The second most important thing that you need to understand that price action is the real key. Now, whether you take that price and tabulate it in the form of an Excel sheet or you take that price and uh, display it in the form of a chart which could be a line chart a bar chart whatever you want to use a, a candlestick chart it doesn't really matter essentially as i said earlier the only information which is important that comes out of the exchange which is the most important piece of information is the price action what was the price level yesterday what is the price level today what was the price level two days back at what levels did the prices 
uh, reach a bottom and then they turned started going to the upside is it only once or is that level uh, something which has been a support multiple times so price action is the key to deciding whether the trades that you will take will be profitable or not you want to develop any trading strategy it has to be centered around the price action because any indicator any trading strategy all we are trying to do is we are trying to kind of understand the price action and take an estimated guess as to what will be the price action in the future we want to look at the existing price action and then decide what the price action could be in the future based on what the price action been has been in the past so for example if i see a stock which has a price action that every time the price comes down to hundred dollars a lot of buyers step up and simply raise the prices higher then the price action is what is telling me that the hundred dollar levels are basically a strong support and so with that i can take an educated guess that in future also if the price dips down to below 100 or close to 100 chances are it's going to revert back so if i see proper candlestick patterns if i see proper uh, uh, technical patterns getting formed there that will basically confirm the theory but the theory itself is not going to be decided by the technical indicators technical indicators can only be used to confirm certain things you cannot use technical indicators to define your trades and that is the key to having profitable trades that it is the price action which is the real key to having profitable trades if you understand the price action i mean uh, there's a book about a wonderful trader jesse livermore if you go and read that book at that time these advanced charting tools nothing was available there were no technical indicators that person used the ticker tape which is basically a continuity of numbers being churned out showing the price action that is all he had to work with and he's one of the most successful traders of all times why because people who understand price action can evaluate that price action using a ticker tape using a candlestick chart using a line chart using technical indicators any way they want to basically evaluate it all these are tools to evaluate that price action but the price action itself cannot be changed or modified depending on the tool you use so you have to understand the basics that it is the price action that you need to understand once you understand the price action what tool you are using to evaluate and make interpretations out of it that is not important that is something which you can freely choose as a trader some traders like using technical indicators some traders simply look at the chart patterns and and that is all some traders just want to look at the price action by looking at the ticker tape they, because they don't understand uh, these chart patterns and the various fancy names that have been given to them so it's all a tool to understand at the end of the day what the price action is telling you if you understand this one concept you're not going to waste your time trying to learn how indicators work because if it's rsi if it's macd these indicators are not bringing in any new additional information please understand go google and look for the formulas for each of these indicators and you will see that the calculation of these indicators may be very complex but end of the day it is based on simply two input parameters which is price and volume so unless you understand this concept that these indicators are only trying to help us understand what is the price and volume saying it's not the other way around that just because you're using an indicator the price or volume would start behaving in a certain manner this concept is the key to profitable trades that price action is the key whether that price action you can understand simply by looking at a sequence of numbers reflecting the price every one hour or whether you can understand that price action by looking at a candlestick chart or by uh, using technical indicators that approach doesn't matter at all so with this out of the way let's proceed further and now let's answer the main question of this video are technical indicators the holy grail are technical indicators something that really work are technical indicators the defining uh, feature of profitable traders no that's not true technical indicators are a useful tool but that's all they are they are a tool they are a tool which help us understand the price action easier for example i'm going to give an example and basically i have done detailed videos on these uh, this particular indicator so i leave the links in the description you can watch those videos to get a much better understanding of how this indicator works and the one that i'm talking about is rsi it's called the relative strength indicator uh, relative strength index indicator I'm sorry so in this particular indicator the indicator is simply a formula and it tells you that in the past few days relative 
to a wider range of days has the price gone up or down so if a stock has gone up by a huge amount in the past two three days and i'm looking at the 14 day rsa so what all this indicator does it it tells me that in the last three days the buy pressure has been much more than what it has been in the past 11 days before those three days so if i'm looking at a 14 day rsi i'm basically splitting it into three days and 11 days and i'm trying to say that in the last three days the buy pressure was too much so now this particular stock price is like a stretch rubber band it's too far away from the mean it's gone up too fast and so chances are that if you see uh, the proper uh, formation the patterns getting formed the, the prices can revert back but that's all the indicator is saying there's no guarantee that the prices will revert back you need to confirm that by looking at a lot of other things like is the price reaching a particular resistance if it's reaching a resistance if it's forming a candle with a long uh, tail to the upside then these are confirmations which are telling me that yes the price is not just overstretched to the upside but i also have other confirmations which are telling me that there is a very good chance that the price can start falling now so i'll leave the links in the description to where i have discussed these indicators in detail but the end of the day the the, the conclusion that i'm trying to give you is that for me rsi is not the deciding thing whether i would go into a buy or a sell position i cannot take a position just based on whether the rsi is below 30 above 30 below 70 or above 70 and the reason is because rsi itself is just giving me one piece of information what is the price action doing instead of me having to look at a chart or me having to look at a sequence of numbers if the rsi was below 30 and it's going above 30 all it's telling me is that the rsi was in oversold condition that means there was a lot of sell pressure recently and now that sell pressure is ending now the prices have started going up probably the prices will continue going up but i really need to confirm that with other things like is the price level at a very very strong support level if the prices were falling down and now they are arrested as is being indicated by the rsi increasing beyond 30 again that confirmation has to come from the fact that this price level is at a support level unless i see a strong support level i can never be sure that this rsi is just a small correction and the prices are going to start falling further so if i get the rsi signal but i can confirm that that the stock is at a very strong support i can confirm that with the fact that now the stock is kind of undervalued because if i look at the valuation of the company the intrinsic value is is now uh, more than the price at which the stock is trading and if i see a candlestick pattern with a long uh, tail to the bottom so i have to look at multiple things to confirm what the rsi is telling rsi itself cannot give me an information enough for to take a trading decision if i try to make my trades simply based on the rsi strategy that if rsi is beyond certain level i will buy if it is below certain level i'll sell that is going to be a total failure because it's as good as betting with a uh, coin and you flip the coin if it's heads i'm going to buy if it's tails i'm going to sell that's that kind of a trading strategy because you have to understand you are just looking at a formula and deciding to trade based on the results of that formula the formula is simply a means to quantify what the price action is telling so if the price action says there is a rapid move to the upside then yes the rsi is going to say this is an overbought condition and rsi will show a value of 70 or higher if there is a rapid fall in price of a stock then rsi is simply going to quantify that price action and say that yes the price uh, the rsi is less than 30 uh, 30 at this point because there has been a rapid decrease in price but that's all rsi does it is quantifying the price action into a number which makes us easy uh, which makes it uh, easy for us to understand what exactly the price action is doing and this becomes very important when you want to create screeners because when you want to create screeners you need this these kind of indicators and tools to basically create certain filters i mean how do i basically quantify and tell the system that show me all the stocks which are oversold so this is something which is in theory i need to quantify the price action into a number so that i can basically use that condition and create a query and get the result of the stocks which are actually oversold and that is where indicators are helpful indicators can act as filters they can help us create screeners but your trading strategy cannot just be the technical indicator no technical indicator can basically act as a trading strategy a trading strategy is much much more than a technical indicator 
so are technical indicators useful the answer to this question is yes can technical indicators make our life much easy can they help us analyze things which may not be evident uh, straight away in front of our eyes the answer is yes can technical indicators be used in screeners definitely because that's one of the ways in which you can quantify a lot of price action which may be in the form of patterns and other things but you can quantify them and you can come up with a watch list or short list of stocks that you can further analyze but beyond that are trading indicators the holy grail that they themselves uh, as as a complete entity can define your trading strategy the answer to that is no if you try to build a trading strategy only around a certain indicator and i'm calling this out because there are a lot of people out there who every month every year will develop a new trading indicator which they'll call the holy grail and say if you buy and sell according to this particular indicator you're going to have a 90 percent probability of having winning trades don't fall for those promises because understand end of the day the price action in the market is totally random so we it, it's when something is totally random because it's a collective behavior of so many people who are trying to trade and invest in the market you cannot have a 90 percent probability of identifying successful trades that can only happen if you have a sound trading strategy that means the trading strategy doesn't have to be just the indicator but it has to be much more than that and we look at the rest of the components in the upcoming slides but for now just remember that indicators are just tools for us to analyze the price action indicators cannot themselves replace the analysis of the price action so they are just tools which give you some indication about what the price action is doing nothing beyond that so this is the most important section and i think this will be something which everybody can use in their day-to-day -day trading is to understand how the professionals the hedge funds people who manage huge amounts of money or people even retail traders who are actually successful in their trading how do they use technical indicators i have repeatedly said that technical indicators are a very useful tool and should be used but we need to use them as a tool not as an end so the first thing is that you need to have a trading strategy with an edge and what do i mean with an edge if you have a trading strategy which does not have an edge that means let's say 60 percent of the trades are going to go against you and your risk to reward ratio is one is to one that is a disaster because 60 percent of the times your trading strategy is going to uh, come up with a losing trade and your risk to reward ratio is also such that if you uh, bet one dollar on a trade then 60 percent of the times you're losing one dollar and when you make money you also make one dollar so this is a disaster recipe right your net odds have to be positive so the first thing that you need to ensure is that no matter how small your edge is but you should have an edge in the market that means look at the casinos if you look at any game in the casino look at the roulette wheel right they have 36 numbers and the chances of a red or a black number coming are actually identical but they keep a small edge because you can either bet on red or you can bet on black so if you look at just the 36 numbers 1 to 36 everything has equal probability but they have a zero right that zero is the edge of the casino because that zero when 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 the wheel uh, ends up the uh, at zero at that time you don't win it neither the red will win you any money nor the black selection will win you any money it's basically the casino's edge same way if you look at any games in the casino they have a small edge and then they know that over a large number of trades that edge will always work out in their favor and so somebody may win money somebody may lose money but over a large number of uh, spins on the roulette wheel the casino is going to make money so you need to have similar kind of trading system and and that trading system can be developed using the technical indicators so again as i said these technical indicators can be one of the tools for example if you've seen uh, other videos that I have created I have a very sound options trading stra strategy which is uh, based on the RSI so I look for stocks which have basically taken a dip and essentially my target of looking at RSI is to make sure I'm not buying at the peaks because something which has taken a recent dip definitely is not trading at its peak so that's one of the ways that I avoid trades uh, from uh, from stocks which are trading at their absolute highs and so that these kind of small things when you club them together they basically give you an edge same way you can have a trading strategy probably based on the short interest on the stocks so when you see a stock 
which is doing well and you see that the, it has a very high short interest then even if the price goes up slightly you know it's going to end up in an explosive move because the shorts will be forced to cover their losses so so these are the kind of techniques these are the kind of things that we want to club together and create a strategy which is basically having an edge and i never recommend putting a single rule i think if you've been watching this video uh, attentively you would have seen that even in the most basic strategies i never try to go against the analyst ratings i never try to go uh, only with technical indicators i always look at the support and resistance levels i always look at the candlestick patterns that are getting formed so when instead of looking at one criteria you are looking at multiple criteria and all criteria is being satisfied only then you enter the trade you are basically increasing the probability of your trade being successful if you focus on only one thing then the chances of that thing going wrong are higher consider it this way if let's say you want to take a, a decision on something a single person has to take a decision and and let's come up with the probability that one single person can be wrong half of the times so if one person is trying to use and take a decision the person may be wrong uh, half of the times but if five or 10 people get together and then they try to pool in their resources they try to basically uh, come up with reasonings their own reasonings to take a decision chances are for any of the decisions where all 10 people are in consensus things are going to actually work out uh, in their favor so the decision is going to be correct so all i'm trying to say is instead of just relying on one thing that you know my technical indicator is giving a buy signal so i'll go and take a long position instead of doing that if you're confirming that signal with a candlestick pattern if you're confirming that further with a support or resistance level if you're confirming that with an analyst recommendation if you're confirming that with the intrinsic value calculation of the company then the odds of things working in your favor are much much higher so the first thing you need to develop a trading strategy which has an edge and you can do it in multiple ways have a look at the rest of the videos on my channel where i have discussed some of these trading strategies and also the screeners on finviz platform that you can use for the same so the first thing and foremost thing you need to have a trading strategy with an edge then secondly we come to effective money management now money management is extremely important in trading especially it's very important for retail traders why because the casinos have a lot of money right they can continuously lose money for days together but they will still have enough surplus cash for that huge number of uh, uh, games to be played so that eventually the probabilities will work in their favor and they will make a uh, net profit retail traders do not have those kind of accounts you cannot afford to have 20 30 40 trades losing trades in a row because if you do that then your accounts will get wiped out so since the capital with retail traders is less the second important thing besides using technical indicators is to have effective money management and when i talk about money management what i'm implying here is like you need to have well defined stop losses now i don't use stop losses because i don't trade in stocks but i control my losses based on the options that i sell so when i'm selling the options i know what is the price point at which i will have to buy certain stocks in case the price action goes against me and i'm willing and i'm actually okay buying those shares at that price so there are different ways of controlling the downside on your account and and that is one thing which is very important forms part of effective money management another thing when you talk about money management would be how much capital do you allocate to a single trade right so i don't recommend ever putting more than 5% of your capital on a single trade if you have a very big account then you can go down to as low as 2% if you have a very uh, small account then you can probably go to as high as 10 or 20% depending on the confidence level that you have in that trade but never more than that so some adjustments have to be made these can't be hard and fast rules but money management essentially is a, is is very very important because you want to make sure that when you have losers you don't wipe out your account and the kind of losses you take can be easily recovered by the rest of the money that is working for you which is actually making you money so if i put 100% of money into a single trade and that is that becomes a losing trade i basically wipe out my account but if i'm just putting 10% of my money and i lose even half of that i still have 95% of my portfolio intact and that 95% portfolio can recover that 5% money maybe in a single month maybe maximum 2 months so i i i have another day to survive and then basically trade in the markets so we'll get into more details in another video on money management but this is a brief i wanted to give that 
money management is also extremely important and the pros rely on money management uh, a lot if you actually talk to any professional trader the feedback from genuine traders that you will get is that you need not have a very high fi or a specialized or an advanced trading strategy but if you're good at managing money you will be a profitable trader so for most traders having good money management skills is way more important than having a very sound strategy and the reason is that the trading strategies will continuously keep changing something which is working today may stop working tomorrow because the market conditions have changed nowadays if you see there is a lot of uh, new kind of trading that has come in which is called algorithmic trading where the computers the programs are buying and selling and so a lot of strategies which were used by people when they were physical traders on the floor buying and selling stocks are no longer in use because the way these programs work is entirely different to the way physical people used to trade on the trading floor so the strategies have to be modified and they have to be updated all the time but money management rules are kind of those golden rules which stay with you forever you will you would have heard people 20 years back also who were trading talking about stop losses and and not allocating uh, more than 2 or 5% of the capital to a single trade the same rules exist today also effective money management is one of the main pillars of successful traders and you must make sure that you gain enough knowledge and you follow these principles with utmost discipline the third and the important thing for any professional trader is portfolio management now what do i mean here portfolio management is again a derivative of the money management principle where you don't want to invest everything into a single stock but at the same time you want to make sure that you take positions across sectors which is essentially called diversification now portfolio management is also about not over diversifying because people who don't understand anything people who are not at all good at analysis they will over diversify they'll go and buy stocks in 50 companies which is again a very bad approach because what's the point of analyzing why would why would you call yourself a trader if you just want to go and buy 50 companies i mean imagine if i were to ask you to pick up a restaurant where you want to go and eat would you just pick up any random restaurant and go to eat you would definitely research the ratings you would look at the feedback and then you would see which restaurants are serving food of your choice if you are a vegetarian you would not go to a restaurant which restaurant which specializes in steak right so so you would do that research before Uh, deciding or shortlisting at least which restaurants you want to be possibly visiting same thing holds for stocks people who over diversify are essentially trying to say that i don't know anything which stock is good which stock is bad so i'll put some money in everywhere and the chances are that something will work out in my favor but actually what's going to happen is you're going to reduce your returns by a lot because something will definitely work out in your favor but you will also end up picking stocks which are not good buys and and there you will lose money so whatever gains you make will be compensated or will be nullified by the losses that you make on the rest of the trades so that is one thing another important thing that comes in portfolio management is to hedge your risk now this is an advanced concept which most people don't do it's basically the hedge funds which do this and essentially it doesn't mean that you need to hedge all your risk it's basically meaning that let's say i was investing into the pharma sector right so i'm taking a long position in one stock in the pharma sector now the company analysis the stock analysis the indicators and everything is one part but what if there is a generic bad news for the pharma sector what happens then the entire pharma sector is going to crash right so am i not better off by putting my money instead of in one stock in the pharma sector i would try to hunt for another stock in the pharma sector on which i am actually bearish so if i have taken a long position in one stock i would try to take a short position in another stock now it's not that i have to forcefully uh, pick up a stock and take a short position which actually uh, my analysis says is going to go up no i am trying to find a stock which is a bad company which i strongly believe is going to fall in price so now if i'm able to find such a stock what's going to happen is i have taken a long position in one i have taken a short position in one if there is no market level or sector level crash then i am going to basically make money on both these trades but if there is a sector level crash which people cannot foresee if there is a market level crash then these two offsetting positions are going to protect me against that kind of a loss because if the long position is going to lose money the short position is going to make me money so these are some of the hedging tactics that you can use where you can double your profits and basically mitigate some of the risks so i think we've taken a lot of time to understand this section but this is how professional traders work and and you can see here based on the discussion that the amount of importance or the time i spent on technical indicators was minimal so that is the place of technical indicators in an overall trading or investment strategy 
that they are a tool but then they have to be just used as, used as a tool and there is so much more to being an overall profitable trader so if you are using technical indicators please use them with the same time kind of importance using technical indicators is not going to be a holy grail it is not going to give you results that you are looking for you have to have a sound trading strategy you have to have effective money management principles and you have to have effective portfolio management rules trading is something which does not get dictated by technical indicators because technical indicators are just one small piece of the entire puzzle so remember that when you're taking your trading decisions Fan finally we come to another thing which probably will save you a lot of money is that if somebody is selling you a course and somebody is selling you an indicator should you buy that because i have seen there are a lot of people who will develop some new indicator and they will be selling the code for their indicator on for different platforms so they will basically send you the code and then you upload that custom code into whatever trading platform you use and then you can get those uh, fancy buy and sell recommendations uh, being plotted on the chart as if if buy gets printed and you actually buy you you you're going to end up making money and a uh, lot of people will make these indicators so complex that they will uh, then sell a course for you to understand how their indicators work and basically what they'll say is although this indicator says very clearly at this point you should buy at this point you should sell still you need to go through an additional course to understand how to use this indicator effectively i mean that is simply trying to get extra money out of you so the real question is end of the day should you buy that indicator and my answer to that is a big no first of all understand that there are more than 200 indicators on most of the trading platforms which are available for free and these cover different kinds of indicators the leading indicators the lagging indicators the stochastics momentum indicators and what and what not so when you have 200 indicators available for free why do you want to buy another indicator which is most probably not going to do much more but use one of these similar calculations and come up with a fancy value right so that's the first thing there are a lot of free indicators already available so if you at all want to use some indicators try the free ones first see if they meet your criteria try to know at least 20 30 indicators and then see whether your fancy indicator that you're planning to purchase is doing something special or extraordinarily different if it's the same kind of information which your free indicators are giving you then you're simply wasting money in fact you'll be wasting more than money it's the time that you will waste in basically using that indicator and if it's not good which is the case most of the times you will end up losing money and recovering that money from the market is another pain it's going to really demotivate you demoralize you and you may end up leaving trading uh, all together so don't waste your money invest your money into the right side of things invest your money into probably courses or books which help you understand more important things like the basic concepts where uh, people uh, teach you about uh, options trading or they are teaching you about basics of technical analysis and not just fancy terms which sound good so my recommendation is if you're really trying to buy an indicator the free indicators cover almost anything i mean i don't buy any indica indicators i use all the free indicators most of the time and and i use a handful of them because my trading analysis as i as i showed you and and more for most professionals if you really talk to them no professional keeps these technical indicators open and and from the people whom you buy technical indicators right just check th uh, this one thing how many indicators are they selling because in my experience what i have seen is these people come up with a new indicator every single year so if one of their indicators is good for making money why do you need to basically create 10 different indicators right so so it doesn't make sense at all and that itself should be a big indication to you whether that indicator genuinely works or not because if an indicator works if tomorrow for some reason i end up developing an indicator where the buy and sell signals are so clear that i can make endless money i would never develop a second indicator as long as that's working so if i am developing a second indicator it's only because that first indicator is not working so i hope this particular video has been informative to you and it gives you a real insight on what technical indicators are all about and it protects you from all the scammers out there who are trying to get your money by promising you something which nobody can deliver instead please focus your time on the real thing please try to understand the basics of price action 
the basics the logic behind why the price is moving in a certain way just because an indicator which is a mathematical formula at the end of the day is telling you a certain number doesn't mean you can predict the future i hope this particular video was useful and it is going to help you decide whether you're going to be using technical indicators or not so I want to know this from you from now on after watching this video will you be using technical indicators only as a tool or are you going to base your entire trading strategy totally on the technical indicator itself if you still believe that technical indicators are enough to trade please leave down uh, in the comment section because I would really want to get that feedback from you hopefully I have shared my experience with you and this is helpful to you if you like this video please like the video subscribe to the channel and this is a big request that i have because if i look at my channel statistics 90 percent of the viewers are not subscribed to the channel so i'm getting good views but uh, it would be good to have you as subscribers on my channel so that you can get notified of any content that i publish and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video soon thank you so much